Well, today we're talking about loving God under trials. How many of you have been through some trials? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to read out of uh, the book of James, chapter 1, 12 through 18, out of the New Living Translation. It says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. The desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give us birth by giving us his true word, and we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Dear Heavenly Father, as we go into your word today, I pray, Lord, that you would just speak to our hearts today. That, Lord, that you would reveal our own desires, God, and that, that we can make an exchange for your way of doing things and your way of being right. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Well, happy 4th of July, amen? Happy 4th of July. I love America. I love the freedom we have here. When you go to places I go and you come in, back into America, you know, it's just amazing the freedom we have. I, I read an article this week that in China, they're asking the people to report anyone that has any religious books to turn them in. And we don't have those issues. You know, we, we can't even relate to that kind of stuff because of that freedom we have here. But they're asking people to turn in people that have religious books like Bibles and other um, books. I remember my friend... When I lived there, he had a bookstore. It was a Christian bookstore, and he had multiple books, just hundreds of different kinds of books on the shelf. And, um, and they're asking now to turn those kind of people in. So the freedom that we have here in America, take advantage of it. Don't be silent. Don't be silent about the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. But rise up of who Christ is in you, amen. You know, it was an extreme trial to birth this country. When, when God wants to birth something, it usually does not come without a fight. You know, in all, and when you look back at the revolution, there was 4,400 servicemen were killed in action during the Revolutionary War. Historians estimate that around 6,000 were wounded and meanwhile, an additional 20,000 were taken as prisoners. Another 17,000 died of disease. On the British side of things, 24,000 soldiers were killed in the Revolutionary War. Now, it may not be as compared with our uh, World War I, World War II, or our Civil War, or things like that, or Vietnam. Um, but the Revolutionary War was a major trial for freedom. And I know Jesus wants all of us to be free here today. Can I hear an amen? amen. Free from the clutches of the enemy where the enemy's had a hold on you. Uh, again, it does not come without a fight. You've got to fight, amen? Uh, God wants his church to stand up and take it head on into battle, amen? Which is inside of you. God wants to get that stuff that's in us out of us, amen? Except and he wants to replace it with who he is, amen? The things, there is things in our life that God is trying to work out of us so that they're not there, amen? And, and you gotta get ready for that blessing that God has for you, amen? James 1, verse four, it says, so let it grow. He's talking about your patience, your endurance. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect, complete, and needing nothing. That's what will happen. And, and here we have in verse 12, here James has come back to talking about the endurance under trials. And we all go through trials, and if we haven't, we will in the days ahead, I'm sure. But we need to allow 
his patience to be perfected in us. And this will bring about, number one, blessing. You know, if you go back to Matthew chapter 5 and you read the Beatitudes, it's blessed of the poor in spirit. There's, a, you know, there's like 10 scriptures of what, what brings about the blessing. You know, but that, those were not limited to just the Beatitudes when it comes to being blessed. We learn here that blessing comes through enduring temptation. How many of you ever get tempted? The rest of you are lying. <laughs> you, fall, you fell into temptation. Well, that, that's the thing. Here we are that we can be blessed through enduring temptation, not giving in to temptation, not following into what the enemy's trying to whisper, doesn't even say that, not following your own desires. Because the desire to, to these things is not, it's not the enemy, you know. Remember Red Fox? So some of you young people, you older people might remember Red Fox. The devil made me do it. <laughs> That's what he used to say. The devil made me do it. That's a lie. The devil doesn't make you do anything. He just plants a thought to you, you know. But we can go, th we can go through trials and temptations and be blessed, amen. We can gain endurance. So when we do that, the result is it approves us to God. We're approved to God because we've endured the temptation. The, and the devil, the devil knows this. The devil knows this. He does not want you to be approved by, before God. He wants to cause you to fail. That's his job. He, he wants to cause you to stumble and fall. Amen. He'll throw a seed at you. He'll, he'll just bring up something. And, and that's what he's trying to do. To get you to fall into the trap he set. So that you fall into sin. And therefore you, you don't receive the approval. So um, the enemy tries to get you where you're weak so so that you maybe won't endure and you won't receive the blessing of the crown of life now i know we all get in um, tempted to do things but when this this is what happens when you endure with patience through your trials and tribulations it shows the whole world and god that you are enduring. Amen. It's a witness that you're enduring. It reveals your love for God. Amen? We, we endure out of a love of God. And he approves us. He gives us approval. He puts a stamp of approval on you. We, when we studied Revelation this last year, you know, this stamp that he puts on our forehead, man, it, it's like, Approved. <laughs> that's what he does but it's not like the fear of man kind of thing you know what the fear of man kind of thing is right you know someone who resist, resists temptation because of the fear of man so the, the thief suddenly becomes honest when he sees a policeman and I got you know I didn't, I didn't have to worry about speeding across America because it was 75 to 80 miles an hour all the way so you could just fly you know but, you know, how about that person that's speeding and sees an officer and immediately hits the brakes, you know? <laughs> I knew somebody laughed. <laughs> the, the man or a woman who controls their lust because they couldn't bear to be found out and be embarrassed. The speeder brakes when they see the highway patrolman, you know? But when it comes down to our love for God, the greater power and greater passion we have for him puts your love for sin in check. And you endure temptation. It's like when Joseph ran away from Potiphar's wife. You know, his words were, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? That was his thing. How could I sin against God? He wasn't worried about Potiphar. He wasn't worried about Potiphar's wife. He said, but that action of being with Potiphar's wife, he said, the thing that stopped him was, how could I sin against God? And he ran out of there. And he still, he still paid the price for it. But you don't hear him complaining about it. You just see him enduring. Joseph, man, he is one of the greatest examples of enduring in the Bible. 
You go back and you read in the book of Genesis about Joseph, what that man had to endure. His brothers throwing him in pit, being sold into slavery, being Potiphar's slave, being accused of adultery, being thrown into prison, interpreting dreams for two guys that served Pharaoh. And he said, I interpreted it so that you could tell Pharaoh about me. And then a couple of years later, they're like, oh yeah, there's this guy in prison. That guy, Joseph, endured. And God wants us to endure, amen? So let's talk about number two, how temptation comes and how it works. So no one can say they're tempted by God. God does not tempt you. He can't tempt you. It does not come from God. He may allow you to be tempted, but it does not come from him. He may allow you to um, be enticed by this evil, but that's uh, on you. James knew that most people had a tendency to blame God. I, I know sometimes I blame my wife. <laughs> a few men laughed. <laughs> you guys. How many of you ever blamed your mate? <laughs> you got a few honest people. <laughs> we blamed our mate. And James, James knew that, that you know, the tendency to blame God was real and that they find, when they find themselves in trial in the midst of tribulation, temptation, that they were blaming God. And it, and it started in the Garden of Eden. When you look at Adam and Eve, who, who's the first person, who's the person that God blamed? I mean, that Adam blamed. Adam blamed God and his wife. It was that woman, you, that woman, you gave me. He blamed God, he blamed his wife. And then Eve says, well, it was the devil that deceived me. You know, the devil didn't have a rock to stand on because he was <laughs> the, the one that deceived him. And um, so then out of that brought, a, you know, curses. You know, the man has to work real hard. How many of you women love that childbirth pain? It all came from here. It was a curse. And then you got the serpent crawl on his belly and uh, crawl on the ground forever. You know, I don't know if you ever held a big snake before, but... I, hold a, I held a, a green anaconda over 100 pounds in the Amazon River jungle one day. I wasn't really excited to hold that guy, you know. <laughs> but the guy picked him up and said, here, you know, and I'm like, ah, I don't want to hold this thing. And then when his head started moving, I thought, I can't stop him. I thought, There's no way I can stop him. But like, you can take him off now. <laughs> Them serpents, whoo. But we have to remember the words that James says. He says, in God's very nature, he's unable to either be tempted, nor does he himself tempt anyone. God is incapable of tempting you. And the hard part of this is number three. Each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. It's on you. I love the silence. Everyone say, own desires. own desires. It's hard to admit because we can't blame anyone else for our trials and tribulations. We have to take credit for our own desires. They're, they're in us. You can't say, this is the way God made me when it comes to the decisions you made in life. You can, you can say, this is what I want and we'll go this way even if God is against it. You can say that because that's what happens. We know God's against it, but we have this desire. And when we let our desires reign in our life over the word of God, that's on you, not on God. So those decisions that you make to do that, that's your problem. That's your way of being disapproved by God. This ain't no 4th of July message. We give a lot of cre credit to Satan, too, for our mistakes. As I, I said earlier, old Red Fox, the devil made me do it. No, your own desires made you do it. What's in you made you do it. And it all begins in number four, your own mind. What you think. Your flesh has this desire and you pay attention to that desire, 
So that desire comes alive in you that to the point that you have to do it. The, the Bible would tell us, take authority over those thoughts. Cast them down. Take authority over those imaginations. Throw them down. Don't allow them to rule in your life. Amen. Don't allow them to take control of you. Get rid of it. Fill your mind up with something else. Fill your mind. Be transformed by the word of God. Amen. By the reading of the word. Be transformed so that those imaginations are gone. But we allow ourselves to be deceived and we think we can control it. It being tra- temptation. We think we can control temptation. When we realize that something that God says is wrong, and we're thinking about it, and we're fantasizing about it, and we don't take authority over it, we're setting ourselves up for failure for our future. It's like lusting after someone when you're married. And thinking that, now I've heard this before, thinking that God has brought this person into your life so that you can be loved the way you really need to be loved. And we think it's okay because God wants you to be happy. That's the biggest load of fruit I ever heard of. (laughs) God wants you to be happy, amen, but in him. God doesn't want you looking for everything else. Uh, Donna, come, give your mic, turn your mic on, come right now, read this. Is it on? Where'd Mario go? He was running the camera. There you go. V2, Mario. If you're feeling restless, most likely it's the enemy messing with you, and you have to go back to having the patience to wait for God's perfect plan. There's a reason for that season, and we need to embrace that and refocus ourselves onto what God is doing and not get restless for that change, restless for something to happen, tired of everything the way it is, what's going on. Focus on what God is doing and find out why he has you where he does and embrace what he has for you. Amen. Amen. You know, you you might be, you know, I think the enemy at times stirs us with a restlessness that We want to do something. We want to do more. But you can't forget what got you there in the first place. You got saved. You got into the Word. You started praying. You started seeking God. And that's what starts stirring you towards what God has for you. But when you say, ah, it's not happening, and you start wandering in other directions, you start looking in other places, looking in all the wrong places if we want to go country. (laughs) And when we do that, We miss what God has for us. There is that time that God is asking you to endure, to press through so that you can break through into his plan. That you can break through into what he has for you. But when you back off and you shrink back and you say, ah, there's got to be something else. I, I, you know, because we get tired of the fight. We get tired of the battle. We want to put the gun away and go home. And we want to wander off to our, doing our own thing. God's saying, wake up. Get back to where I've called you. Get back to doing what got you to this point so far. You got to get into the word. You got to get into prayer. You got to get into connecting as a body of Christ. You can't shrink back. The Lord showed me when we were driving, we were driving by farms, farm after farm after farm. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. But I noticed that on the farm, that on the fringe, they would either cut off a part and not plant it or you know, if, if everything was this tall, when you got to the fringe, it started getting shorter and shorter and shorter and it was down to nothing. And it was because on the outskirts, there was areas that it wasn't getting watered. It would, um, so it would just wouldn't grow. And the Lord showed me that's what's happening after COVID. People are, are not coming back to church. They're staying on the fringe. They're out here on the fringe and, the, and they're drying up. They're not getting the water that they need by connecting in the body of Christ. And because when they do that, then they start getting into their own mind. They start getting into their own thinking. And that's when it becomes stinking thinking. We get tired, we wanna do our own thing, and we start doing our own thing. We, and Jake, if they can go to Walmart, they can go to church. I'm telling you, you gotta get this right. If you're watching online, you gotta get this down. We need you, you need us. 
We need that iron sharpening iron. We need to rub off on each other, amen? We need to touch each other, amen? amen. We need to know that we can come to the house of the Lord and see Jesus. Because if we, if we don't, we dry it up. You know, I know you can watch it on TV, and I'm glad you're watching today. But I'm telling you, God wants you in his house. God wants you to come back to the house of the Lord. And you know, I, I, I was... I try not to get so fired up about this because I don't want to offend people, but I, I, I don't care today. <laughs> it's not that I don't care about you. I don't care if this offends you because I know that God wants you in the house. God wants you to get back what you were called to, that you stop sitting at home and being frustrated, that you stop sitting at home and being lonely, that you get back and connecting with the body of Christ, going to lunch, having some fun, doing a little bit of something that's besides staring at your TV. Or playing games or playing on your internet or whatever. But that's, as I was driving, I think I was driving across South Dakota when the Lord told me that. Because I kept seeing these farms that had this dry area around the outside where they didn't get the water. You need the water. You need the water of life flowing over you, amen? Amen. And we need to be able to minister to each other, encourage each other, and build each other up. Amen? We've got to get out of our own minds. We've got to stop lusting after things that aren't ours. Amen? You muted her again? <laughs> he, muted, he muted you. Oh, I was just going to say it last. Is we likened it as to... Um, looking at a picture on TV of a hamburger as opposed to having it in your hand and actually putting it in your mouth. It's different when you're looking at the picture of the TV or the message as opposed to experiencing the emotion of that. Amen. Like I said, it's like lusting after someone when you're married and thinking God has brought that person into your life. So it's okay to get a divorce and leave that mate. How is it that God, when he hates divorce, would do that? See, it's our desire. It's not God. So the the story really is that you're led by your own desires, and you allow yourself to be led by them, and it leads to sin because of what you've meditated on, what you've thought on. And it says in this passage today, every good gift comes from God. Amen? Amen. And we can expect no true goodness from our own fallen natures. And from this, that would entice us away from what is right. We need to weigh weigh things. I spelled way wrong in my notes here. (laughs) I spelled it W-A-Y instead of W-E-I-G-H. But we need to weigh things in our life against the eternal perspective. Stop weighing things against the consequences here, but the eternal perspective there is where we need to line up. This is where you go to the word to figure things out. This is where you go to get the word according to the eternal perspective, not your own. Remember, freedom comes with a battle. We're all in that battle. It isn't free. The battle that goes on in you about temptation is real. Do you want to celebrate freedom as we are today here in the United States? Or would you rather be deceived into slavery? We talked about it. You sang it, you know, so many times you went over it, you know. We're not going to be a slave. We're not going to be a slave. We're not going to be a slave. And we, ha- we have to know what it takes to stay out of slavery. To walk into the freedom that has God has for each one of us today. We want to cast down our own desires, which lead to sin. Which leads to death. Which destroys our crown of life. Which takes away our eternal perspective of what God has for us. We got to kill that guy. 
and he lives within us. It's not the devil. It's not God. It's you. It's in us. And every day we have to pay attention to what's going on around us so that what's inside of us, of the old man, doesn't take control of us. That we constantly renew the old guy into Christ Jesus so that he doesn't have a voice, so that he doesn't have control, so that we can walk forward and push into what God has for us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mighty love for us. We thank you, God, that you do not tempt us. You do not lead us astray, God. But, Lord, that you've empowered us to overcome. You've shown us the way to get through it, God. Lord, you've shown us how to endure, God. And, Lord, I I know that people can go to the gym and endure. Lord, they'll go to the gym for months and endure that trial of lifting weights and hurting muscles and the soreness that comes with it. But even that fades away. Lord, I pray today that our endurance for you would not fade away. But Lord, that we would be approved of you and receive that crown of life. That it stay intact. And Lord, that we would never just take it off and set it on the counter so we could fulfill our own desires. But, Lord, that the crown of life would be so intact, we'd be so approved by you, God, that the world would see that we are Christians. The world would know that we are Christians. Lord, and that we would truly love God and love one another. And maybe you're here today and you say, I've been in a battle with some temptations. It's been a little, little bumpy for me. You know, temptation isn't a sin until you allow it to be. But you've been in a battle. You've been in a fight in this thing. I want to pray for you. If that's you, just raise your hand right now. I want to pray for you. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Father, you see all the hands up right now, and I pray right now that, Lord, that you just fill us with your spirit right now, God. Just rain down on us. Yeah, God. Oh, just fill us, God, that, Lord, we overcome the world, Lord, by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb today, God, out of our deep love for you, God, that, Lord, that we'd not walk in the fear of man, but we'd walk in the fear of God, wholly surrendered unto Jesus, not desiring, Lord, our own way, but your way, Lord, your way in our life. I pray you strengthen every one of us. And I pray, Father God, for the saints in this room that have walked through the valley of the shadow of death to the point that they fear no evil. That they would be encourager to those around them, Father. That they would share their story of how they come through, God. That you'd empower them by the Holy Spirit. Give them such a boldness, God, to step out, to share how they came through that valley and how they're no longer there. And Lord, they're on the mountain with you, in your presence. I pray, God, that you stir our hearts with a passion to share the story, to encourage one another, the ironing, sharpening iron, Father God. Now, Lord, we walk in such boldness of what you've done, taking no credit of ourselves, but all to the glory of God, that we could share with people, this is how I got through it. This is how I overcame And Lord, that you would constantly give us that strength of overcoming. Lord, that we not go backwards in these days of trials and tribulations. Father God, but we press forward into what you have for us, what you've created us to be. Lord, let us no longer just go quietly into the night. But let us be a voice of the Lord rising up in the day to speak your word over people. Father, we love you so much. And we thank you for this day that we could celebrate in America the freedom. And I pray, God, long may it last. Long may it last. 
God, that you continue to give us time and opportunity to send out missionaries, Lord, to help even our orphans in Uganda, our pastors in Uganda. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for this day. I pray a blessing over every person. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand today, huh? I got a few announcements for you. You want to find out what's going on basically at New Hope? You can click on the, the payer, paper here and it'll tell you what's going on. And uh, if you want to give, you can giving made easy. Just click on that QR code. These are on the information booth if you don't, didn't keep the one we gave you the first time. And then uh, prayer, if you need prayer or, or keep a list of events going on, QR code on the back. You just scan it with your phone and it tells you what's going on. So you know how to do that, right? <laughs> There's my phone. It's in your purse, honey. So you just take your, take your, uh, you take your phone, and uh, if you have an iPhone, you can go to camera and take a picture of it. Well, it says open in Chrome. So I just push that button. Took me right to newhopefwc.com. That's all I did. I didn't even take the picture. I just put the camera on that QR code and it took me right to our website. How to connect with us, the media, Facebook, YouTube, prayer requests, you can put it all in there. So that's how you use that, amen? And um, the only other announcement I got, that'll tell you everything weekly that's going on. We have a parent and youth meeting with Pastor Maggie regarding youth camp next Sunday, right after service, okay? Where do you wanna meet them at, Maggie? Right here? In kids' church area? Okay, so. July 11th, next Sunday, if your kids are going to camp, go meet with Maggie so they need to know what they need to bring and, you know, how they need to act. <laughs> you always got that one kid. We wonder who it'll be. <laughs> Just be determined. It's not going to be my kid. <laughs> Amen. And if you're here for the first time, we're so glad that you're here today. And we want to uh, just connect with you. If you'll go, Jeanette is standing at the door back there. If you go and connect with Je Jeanette for just a couple of minutes and uh, um, spend a few minutes there, and that would be great for us. And there's food out on the counter right now, some coffee, water. Roberta's always begging everybody to take it, so please grab a snack. <laughs> Amen. Father, we bless the people of God today as they go. I pray for healing. I pray for prosperity, and I pray for protection over their life this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.